Hello and welcome to Engine Adventures towing review of this 2023 Nissan Frontier Pro 4X. This thing's rated to tow about 6,400 pounds. This trailer is in the 4,600 range with about a 450 tongue weight, 440 in that range somewhere. Uh, right now the scale's reading higher than that just from driving around and bouncing and then parking after it bounced. But anyway, we're between four and 600 pounds there uh, with about 450 is the actual tongue weight. And really hasn't done too bad. Uh, let's go ahead and get into all the driving footage and talk about all that stuff but not a bad vehicle at all i was expecting it to not do nearly as well as it did really been pretty impressed with it also don't let them fool you these are driving lights not fog lights because you have to have your headlights on when the fog lights are on i know some people mock me for that but just the other day we had a pretty good blizzard about 7 30 8 o'clock at night it was dark and couldn't see with my headlights on because it was reflecting off the snow so much but the vehicle i was in was a 2012 honda pilot you can't have the fog lights on without the headlights on so again i either had to have all my lights off so just the running lights were on or have the headlights on and either way not be able to see very well or not have people be able to see me as well which is a safety issue so i really wish if you're gonna equip fog lights, make them fog lights instead of an extra set of driving lights. All right. Currently have about 4,500 pounds behind us. Can't remember if it's 48 or 46, and then I take out the batteries in the winter time. So those are about yeah, 150 pounds probably between the two of them, 140 pounds. So anyway, around that 4,500 pound mark and these grades get pretty steep. Speed limits are slow, but really pretty steep grades and windy. Speed limits 40, not too much higher than this, but yeah, I'm actually surprised at how well this Frontier has been doing. I'm really excited next week to get into a Tacoma because obviously the number one seller in this category. But honestly, probably not the best truck in the category. We'll see. We'll see you next week. Anyway, um, yeah, this thing uh, does have tow haul mode no trailer brake controller so I'm actually using a wireless controller and it is working pretty well right now I'm a huge fan of solid connections so having this wireless one not something I want to do in the media vehicles I have to but in uh, if it were my own vehicle and I was towing more than once maybe more than once a year with it, then I would definitely invest in a real brake controller, but so far it's been good. Uh, it's a Kurt Echo, I believe is the name of it, just for those wondering. Um, yeah, again, this thing, I mean, we're pretty high RPM range, but I don't feel like I'm, uh, there we go, so I'm flooring it now. So I guess I am kind of maxed out on torque there, but really, doing good this trailer is absolutely massive for a frontier for some reason whatever the design of this trailer is the frontal area is just awful so it's got a huge frontal area which when you get up into 45 50 miles an hour and above that's where it really affects it and we'll uh, we'll check fuel mileage when we're done but <clears throat> I don't imagine going to be getting great fuel mileage and this trailer never does which is why i love to test with it because 
it doesn't matter what truck you're using because there's so much wind resistance it's gonna get you worse fuel mileage than something like a flatbed trailer that weighs 14,000 pounds with you know a, a vehicle or two on it or something like that like this thing really is just such a big broad trailer and yeah Frontier is towing it like a champ um, I do love they have the auxiliary gauges so the problem with it is is you've got no information so you have auxiliary gauges here but what temperature is it actually at on the left you can see the tranny temp and on the right sorry on the right's the battery but we've got all this snow melting off it's a warm day today and a little bit of hydroplaning a little bit of slush here and there so i have got to make sure to be careful anyway so on the left you got the trans temp no numbers though and then again here you have oil pressure and oil temperature there on the left and right in the center cluster and you don't have any numbers to see what it's really at at least it gives you an indicator of you're not too hot or you are getting too hot and the other thing about these is in a lot of modern vehicles the sensors are set up in such a way that they don't really give you a real reading anyway it's not like the old mechanical sensors so they give you a reading and if it gets too hot it lets you know it's too hot but before you get there it might say you're just fine you're just fine you're just fine all of a sudden it's way too hot so uh, that's another thing that happens I have no idea how Nissan does theirs I can't say one way or the other but I do know other manufacturers have it set up that way I was not expecting the road to be this wet so that was it. We just climbed, I want to say 1,600 feet in the course of a few miles. It's, you know, a pretty good climb the whole way. Some sections about 10% grade, I think I calculated. The overall average is like nine. So you're, you have some sections that are lower, some sections that are higher. And of course, it's a big thing to ride your bike and run up here because it's much higher elevation and it's really pretty as we'll see in just a second so you can see out over the valley today pretty clear day the storms came in yesterday and kind of cleared everything out so pretty clear day yeah no no problems at all all those corners and whatever you know 45 miles an hour is not that fast but it's a good test for stability, especially towing this size of trailer and this size of truck. And it's really doing quite well. So today it's March 11th. I was up here about a month ago and it appears that conditions are worse now than they were about a month ago, which is interesting. I think it was three weeks ago we were up here with the Sequoia. Anyway, uh, we haven't had to hit four-wheel drive yet. There's a lot of weight over the rear axle, which helps give it a good amount of traction and pushes down through the snow. But I just keeping the camera running in case something does come up. We can get video of it of me being stupid. We're giving it a shot, but I am hitting four-wheel drive now. And it beeped, but I don't see an indicator on the dash anywhere. So this is so skinny. Um I'm gonna call it quits. So we're gonna back all the way back up this. One thing, even though the seven pin wiring's plugged in, 
it keeps those sensors on, which is quite annoying. So once you plug in the seven pin on any vehicle, it really should be shutting those sensors off. I can't believe that I'm not slipping more than I am here, but yeah, doing, doing okay there with the four wheel drive. Because the trailer's so wide and the truck's so narrow, I can't see down the sides very well and it got jackknifed before I could get to it. Anyway, we're good. Quick correction. There we go. Oh, and every time it flips those sensors back on, so every time you go from drive to reverse, whatever, it's going to flip those sensors back on. Very nice car getting out of my way back there. And see if we can turn right here. Try that again. Oh, not only does it flip those sensors on, but it slams on the brake. Whoops, wrong. Didn't mean to hit that. plowing through some snow but we're doing all right there we go and yeah we did okay there not too bad fun times all right I'm gonna go up and flip the camera off on that camera so based on what I've noticed so far, downhill, it's actually gonna do really well also. So the grade braking on this thing, again, tow haul mode button's right here. And we are in tow haul mode. I don't know if you can see the green tow there, but we're just gonna let it do its thing. It's not real steep right here. It'll get steeper in a minute. But with the snow and ice and whatever on the road, we've gotta be careful. Yeah, it definitely, so it rained a ton yesterday down in the valley and must have just dumped, I don't know, six inches of snow up here or more overnight. So all oh, that's melting off right now. And it's 37 degrees, so pretty warm. Steep section here, we're just at 40 miles an hour holding 3,000 RPM and holding just over 40 still. It's climbing a tiny bit and doing just fine. If I push on the brakes, which I don't need to, I don't really want to right now. Um, and you can tell I'm all over the road because of the snow and stuff. I'm not too worried about the separate lanes for most of this anyway. Um, yeah, so I don't even have to touch the brake. Again, lots of wind resistance on this trailer, but the Frontier has, I don't know if it's a higher compression engine or something, because there's a decent amount of uh, engine braking as well. At least it feels that way. So it might have, you know, a 10 and a half to one compression ratio instead of a nine or something like that. I don't think it's 11 because it doesn't call for premium fuel as far as I know. Um, anyway. It's probably got a slightly higher compression ratio because it's doing pretty good on the engine braking portion of it. All right, I just want to talk briefly about this again. So this is the wireless charging pad on here. And even with my phone on and running this trailer brake controller, so if you hit the button, that'll load the trailer brakes or apply pressure on the trailer brakes. This is connected via Bluetooth 
to the thing in the back. But here on the wireless charger, I've gained 20% of battery in about half an hour of driving. So I wasn't expecting it. I was kind of expecting it to maintain the battery, but it actually has been increasing the battery power. So all you do, plug this little thing in to your seven pin. It has the cable there to tie it on. I mean, it still has the latches on the bottom side. You can see like right there, maybe. It's hard to see, but anyway, it's got a little finger that holds the plug in. It has the same thing up here, so it shouldn't fall out, but extra security with that. And then, yeah, just hook it up, connect your Bluetooth, and you're good to go. So this does have a manual shift mode too. Simply pull the shift lever to the side, get a big glare off of that, but not in real life, just on the camera for whatever reason. Um, anyway, so you can shift manually up and down from there. I'm just gonna leave it and drive for the most part. I did notice when I push on the brakes, it will downshift. There we go, I'm pushing on the brakes and there it goes, downshifts. And it actually holds speed pretty good. So I understand this is not a super heavy trailer and it has a big billboard style front. It's just a big bold wind sail that's slowing us down. But overall, I'm still very impressed with this Frontier. And I'm actually gonna have to flip around because I didn't get a single picture up there. So we're gonna flip back around. And full throttle. Ford Ranger would probably not probably, it would outpace this thing. The new Colorado four-cylinder turbo, especially the high trim level ones with the most power, would probably or would definitely outpace this thing. But it really isn't that bad at all. Like I've, the power on this thing is about right for what it is. Yes, it's always nice to have more power, but no, it's not a problem at all on this thing. Thank you for watching Engine Adventures towing review of this 2023 Nissan Frontier Pro 4X. It did really good, really surprisingly well for this trailer. Yes, it has a lot of wind resistance, so when you're going downhill, it helps slow you down, but this thing still has a pretty decent engine braking. It does a good job of slowing the trailer down just by using the engine. And yeah, the brakes, all that stuff, whatever, the trailer's got brakes, so it stops just fine. But Anyway, I was surprised at how stable it was. I expected a lot more instability out of it, but really it did quite well. And honestly, I wouldn't tow this trailer with this truck, but as far as testing, you know, one time thing, it's a good test to see, you know, how well it can do. Anyway, if you liked what you saw, be sure to subscribe, ring the bell so you get notifications when we post new videos and give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, be sure to comment down below. Give me a thumbs down. Either way, comment. Let me know what you liked and didn't like. Thanks again. Have a great day.